your boy Tangi in the house. All right, yo, 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 yo. Got this podcast going. Yo, that's pretty sick. That's pretty sick. Yeah, it's your boy Manabe here. Our topic today is execution barriers, but yo, we got a special guest today here, Silent Better Shinobi. Here, yeah, I don't know. I don't oh. know where Vettori is right now, but well, we we should start with like an introduction to Shinobi. So what's up, man? What's good? Better be doing that live. What was that? Oh, no, 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 no. So, I, th- I think a lot of people here don't know you, so can you, can you give yourself, like, a background? Fighting game background, I guess? Uh, Don Shinobi. Kind of my operate that sloop. <laughs> um, Play multiplayer. Play multiplayer. Play playing, yeah. Uh, I've been playing since like oh four, like late like, oh four. Um, my main game is Melty, but I mean I'm Melty, but uh, guilty. And uh, um, you might have seen me dabble with Melty and Vanguard Princess, I guess. Um, uh, I'm currently getting into a uh, uh, Chaos Code right now, and I guess um, CP when it comes out. But other than that, you know, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just around on Twitter and stuff. Yo, man. Your boy sounds like he's been chilling. Yeah, pretty much. I don't, I don't play as much as I used to, but, you know, you know, that's, that's, that's how I like it. I get old. Yeah, I feel you, man. I got, I got, I got a job now and shit, so. Fuck a job. Goodbye, free time. Yo. So I make you money. That's the best. Don't make you money for these bills. Not to go anywhere. What do you think? What game you were enjoying the most in your like career? Although I think your career is still going. Uh, it's it's, it's always been guilty here. I'll see like um. Like Ashes again in PS2. I went to Evo. That was those were good times. But like in overall, in overall, in my career, it's probably guilty here. Well, I, I know it's guilty here. But like at but at like at one certain point, Melty in 2010 was like the best year ever. You got a story for us? Uh, I mean like. It's not a story. It's just like it was like it was it was good times. It was good times back then. Uh, back in 2010, you had Final Round and uh, NEC like the year before, like NEC 09 and Evo and uh, the NEC afterwards. You know, th- those were some really good tournaments for Melty. And you know, people came out and you know, it was it was it was just it was just community getting together and just. Just playing what we love, man. And it was about time it happened. <laughs> so. I see, I see. Also, it is your first time on this show as well, Kenji. So you should give us your background as well. Wait, do I even have to give a background? Well, if you want to introduce it's yourself to these people. Game is yes. My main fighting Forbidden game is Forbidden Memories. Yu-Gi-Oh. The PS1 game, game was really hard. Yeah, hold it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I don't have that much as a background, but everybody should know me by now. Most likely right now, the games that I'll be playing is probably Gundam. And most likely is going to be Ultra Street Fighter 4. Oh, damn, hopping on that new game. Yeah. I'm just opening the opening the um the channel and I see that see that picture you got for me. Whoever did that shit, you're the best. <laughs> like real talk. It's pretty good. Anyway, we could probably start. All right. 
let's start it up. Take the mic, Clark. Tumbleweed. It's gonna eat my chicken. Oh my my bad, my bad. And my fucking mic was off. And so our first question is how you how how do you make how do you formulate a legit block string? How to block sting legit. How to block sting legit. <laughs> <laughs> um well me personally, well, first of all, when I tell people about getting in the fighting games is to um is to pretty much understand how how your moves work and that's for like anybody if you're starting out in fighting games is to always is to always understand like un understand your move set what you have and what it's good at so say for instance well i'm just gonna throw out an example like melty of course not all black strings start with 2a everybody knows that well good people know that not all block strings start with a right so what i do is of course i just i just i just put one in my mind before i even go to videos and then see how videos like um work or work around my example what i think a block string is like say for instance i would do something like a five i do something like five a 5B, 2B, C, and then 2A to do the rebeat. That's something that's that's something simple. And then I see, and then I and then I go to videos. I see, uh, I see people work around it. I see people that would start with something like, um, they would do the same string, but they would switch up. They would switch up. Uh, uh, they would do like 5B first, and then. And then 2B, 5C, they would um, they would stick to that method and just have a different rebeat. But like I said, it, it would vary between games. But you know, I'm putting out Melty Blood because it's a it's a pretty it's you know it's, some of the game is pretty strong on the strings, of course. So so combining what I would I would call a block string which I thought was a pretty good example. And then I would see, um, and then I would see videos of a block string that is, you know, kind of, kind of going around my example block string. I would just pretty much sit down and combine the, so that I would have something that is not only something I made up and what, but is still, it's but it's still like in the sense of a in the sense of a block string. But once again, you know, that's just me in one certain game and it varies because I'm pretty sure Street Fighter has a different way of doing it and I know for a fact Guilty Gear does too. But it's 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 kinda the same. But um understanding but understanding your moves, what gatlings into what, um frames that sort of thing. But Generally yeah. speaking, when I tell people who are starting in fighting games to just understand your move set, like frames, and what to do exactly, and the same could be put into making block stream. What do you think, Sean? Yeah, I thought that was pretty well put together, but you know that is just for one game. So since one game takes a while to explain, it's. It's easy to say that this topic can, you know, take hours to explain. But yeah, I believe the golden rule is know how your moves work, like, you know, frame advantage, startup, active frames, all that kind of stuff. And if you're just like a beginner and you just want some examples and whatnot, then after you learn how your moves work, you start watching videos. So you watch like how people like how people attack when someone else is blocking so when you see something like a string that ends in a certain way you think to yourself well why did it end this way 
and then you're like, oh, it ended because it ended this way because it's like a plus one move or something, or a move that isn't really punishable after the fact. Or you may see like a person a person do a block string that has like a bunch of gaps in it. And you know, when there are gaps then the the opponent can retaliate as well in different ways. They could like jump out, backdash, counter poke, that kind of stuff. But it also depends on what I think is most important and probably one of the more advanced concepts with like block string is knowing what your opponent wants to do like is your opponent one to just like mash uppercut during block strings or something if so then make your block strings tight or leave a gap and then just block instead of like creating a stagger or does your opponent like respect a lot in which case you can start taking liberties and maybe go for some throws or some staggers to like try and confuse them yeah man you gotta go for the mix-ups definitely since it wasn't mentioned, you should have more than one block string. You don't want to be the kind of player that only has one block string and you get very predictable about it. Yo, Kenji, you want in on, in on this? Well, what Sean is... Oh, shit. Hold up. Well, yeah. It's also kind of hard. I like to start of the game you're playing, especially if you, like, you don't know the frame data. Obviously, it's not out for the game, so people will kind of just do, like, t two shorts and try to tick throw people all the time, stuff like that. User was moved to your for, like, channel. Arxis games, I would say, you know, you just watch videos and copy <laughs> what they do for, like, block strings and such. And then when people start getting around it, try to understand like how you counter their counter. So I'm guessing your answer is learn about your character. Watch know, videos. Know, know what to do, watch videos. It's pretty fucking legit. Yo, I'm actually learning something right now. That's good, Kinji. That's very good. Alright, we got another question here. What do you think about the recent info on P4U2? Well, I actually don't know much about P4U2. Does anyone know stuff about it here? Uh, There's a fifth, a new character, like an original character. Everybody's gonna love picking him and playing him. Honestly, I don't really care. Well, I'm waiting for Exert. I see. P4U2 isn't going to be out for a long time, that's all I can say. Because this is just a location test. Yeah. But, I don't know. It might, I might try it out. Because I usually try out new games. Like, I'll probably try out CP as well. Uh, are you going to get but the Japanese one right? I don't know. Probably not, because it's really expensive. But with Exert on the horizon, then I don't really see myself playing much else. Especially since, you know, there's also plus R. I do like the fact that they're making a sequel for it too. I, I didn't. I wasn't that big on the the first game. The mechanics in that game are kind of nice, but the overall play to me just didn't feel that much fun. Like me playing that game for the first month felt identical for me playing that game for the fourth month, and I got pretty bored with the game very fast. Same here, Clark. I tried the game for about two weeks, and it didn't stick off me as much as I thought. Yeah, it's good they're making a new version. At least people might get into the game again. My, Me, myself, I'm not going to like try to play it, but you know, people might bring it to casuals here. When we find our new venue or whatever, it would be nice to play. You have any thoughts? I probably played it the most. Out of well in NorCal anyway in our community, but you know I played it very regularly. I liked the game, and then I think Guilty Gear came out PS3, so it kind of started falling off the radar. Especially since I stopped making the effort to go to tournaments and stuff. Ah, I see. 
I was like more busy with school. Anything on this, Shinobi? Uh, P for you too. I haven't really had my eye on it because I didn't really play P for you that much. So, um, it's looking to be very interesting. Um, um, the shadow cats is like the one thing that like has me intrigued with the game. Because it pretty much doubles the cast. I don't want to see how that works. That's that's pretty much the thing. <laughs> yeah, the shadow characters for P for U two really is intriguing, because unlike uh the past character, they don't have a burst, and they have a specialty where they can just keep on spamming the supers on almost like for a couple seconds. Isn't that correct? I have no uh, idea. Yeah. Yeah. They don't have a normal burst. They just have like this mode where they have limited meter for a while. I see, I see. Oh well. No, 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 none too interesting questions from us, because it, it seems none of us are that interested in that game right now. Nope, none of us aren't. This question's a little silly. It'll take a while. It says, what would a veteran's player's reaction be to a game that lets you customize inputs? Meaning... Assuming we lived in a reality where it wouldn't interfere with running tournaments in any way somehow, i.e. you could pick Fireball if it was quarter circle forward, or back, or SRK, or whatever input you wanted to give it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty stupid, honestly. Like, if you can make your DP not a DP, when it probably should be, it's, it's a little, a little be, dumb. Or make it like a down down motion so you don't have to like guess which way he's going to end up. That's pretty broken. If they try, if they try like cross you up, yeah. Six I want one for indeeds. I'm sure yeah. there's a good reason this this would be bad. <laughs> yeah, quarter circle forward sonic booms. That's all stupid. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of question is this? What's your favorite tapioca boba fett tea flavor? It's literally spelled boba fett. <laughs> yeah. Yo, I never Let's had skip. a boba fett flavor before. Oh, you want to skip this, Sean? I vote skip. I I vote skip too. This question sucks. It hella sucks. Yo, man, you guys need to ask good questions. What the fuck? You guys gotta ask better questions than this, man. Oh, this question's got like, why do bad, why do really bad normals exist? Shouldn't step one of a fighting game design be to making so that every normal has a purpose? Take Dead or Alive Five for example. There are like ten million moves per character. Some are awful, and step one of learning that character is to never use X, Y, or Z moves. What's up with that? That's like a common trend with 3D fighting games for some reason. You just have so many normals, but like, so many of them are like negative 20 on block and shit, and then they don't track or whatever, and there's like, maybe one situation where you might use this move and not die horribly. Man, we need to we need to have a developer with us, a fighting game developer, and so we can ask that shit for him. Hmm. I wanna know that shit myself too. It's like why would you ever put that kind of move in a goddamn fighting game? Well, for like two D games anyway, like it's hard to actually see what move is good until you have people play it for a while. Cause you know they're there may be certain situations where like a move that people think is bad may be like the perfect counter in a certain situation. So like when you're developing a fighting game at the beginning, it's hard very hard to gauge what move will be useful or what will be good, that kind of thing. Oh, okay, I see now. That's what load testing is for. An example yeah. of a bad normal, Jams 3H. What the fuck is yeah, Jams 3H? Your channel. It's the it's her old 6H. The splits. Oh. Yeah. It was like a, a sideways cartwheel. Yeah, that. 
Oh, I you, see. You, you, you want, you want to bitch about this? Just, just bitch about it in chat. I'll read it out loud for you. It's <laughs> like, it's, no, no, no. Let's not waste time with that. <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, well, I, I know from the move is that it's like uh, low and vol, and I think that's it. And it's unsafe on hit, so you can't really combo from it. Uh, not even, not even on hit. It's like a free throw. So, that sounds pretty bad, then. Yeah, like, I think, I think it was used like, um, like in proper spacing where only one hit would land because you can combo off of it if it was only one hit. User left your channel. But the thing is that it was two hits, and if both hits land, you know the second hit won't be a counter unless. The guard bar is jacked up so high that both hits will be counter hit, you know. But I don't even know why I'm trying to give a reason to use the move. I'm just saying don't use it. And the only reason why it would come out is because you missed 2H on your combos, Emma. Uh, well, it's pretty unfortunate that moves like that exist, but I think Sean gave a very good reason why. It's pretty hard to balance. This question is long as fuck. Should fighting games that are designed in a post-arcade era be designed intentionally to have some cast members whose execution is pad-friendly slash pad-advantage and others whose execution requirements are ideal on stick? Why would this be good or bad? This question confuses me. It confuses um, me also. I would, I, I, would, I would think that would be... I think there would just be fair game for both pad and stick. I think people were just having like this. Some people are having this like you know myth that people who play stick have it better on execution than pad players or some shit like that. I don't know. It was it's something like but um you know that that only that only depends on the player. Um, whether or not you play pad or stick on preference. I prefer pad, even though I can play on stick just fine, but I prefer, I prefer pad solely on movement. And someone would argue with me, well, your movement would be better if you played on stick. So that's that's you. I'd rather, I'd rather play on pad, because with stick, I think my movement is ass, even though I even if even if I did grind at it, I think it would just be awful. So. Anything, Sean? Uh, I wouldn't say we're in the post arcade era yet because Japanese developers still develop fighting games for arcade release. But if there were to be a time where I don't know Japanese developers develop games fighting games exclusively for like consoles then the first thing you would have to do is figure out exactly what makes like or what would make something easier on pad than on a stick or something like that like figure out what advantages a pad would have in terms of inputs rather than like a stick I mean there's a lot of stuff you would have to do but the question is just like I don't know. We're not in the post arcade era yet. And I think if arcades were to die, then fighting game development would be like much slower and the quality of games would probably be lower. <clears throat> well, but I, yeah. I have nothing to add. Do you have anything to add, Kenji? None either. <clears throat> okay, then let's go to our next question. Capcom's in a bad finan financial state. Should the company just die? Also, what's your fa favorite tapioca milk tea flavor? You already asked this question. <laughs> I'm not a oh. business major, so I'm not going to answer it. I don't know anything wait, about it. Wait, wait, wait. What was the wait? What was the question again? Like it was something about Capcom being a financial bind. It's they're in a bad financial shape. Should they die? Uh, yes. I, this question yes. sucks. Give it. 
It does suck. Well, why, why, why would you say you should, that? You should, you should read the questions before you put them. I on. don't know. I just. I don't yeah, know. It's just like. <laughs> I, they was like, yo, you just like, should they die? I was like, shit. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I was talking to Clark. You should screen these questions. Don't just like read off everyone. I'm actually like, skipping like some bad ones. Legends. That's all I wanted. To... All right, all right. Let's try this question. Happen. This question might be legit. Who would you recommend to a beginner in Melty? I don't play Melty. Go ahead, Shinobi. Um. Uh, playing current code. Play, play, um, play Cisse, the running homie. But, uh, if you don't wanna, if you don't wanna win, quote Who unquote. Who is Cisse? Seifuku. Uh, the, the, yeah, Seifuku. the fancy Akiha. Akiha. I, I guess he's saying you should play that character because, uh, she's pretty straightforward Jeez. or something. She's pretty straightforward and she wins. But uh, if you don't, but if you don't want to win, I have other suggestions. You can play. Um, well, pretty much the. Um, I guess I should say just stepping into melt sort of characters would be um, the Tonos, Nadia, and Shiki, um, the L. Uh, any H character, in my opinion. But I will say that some. Some H characters do have um do have like a certain do, do have like really really uh executional heavy combos. Not all of them, but some of them do. Um. Uh, who else? It's you know. Do you think half half Vision's all right for new players? Uh yeah 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 yeah. I knew I was missing somebody. Um, H V Xion is a is a good new friendly character. Um. Pretty simple combos. They're not very hard. They give you Oki, so you can learn about how the pressure works in that game. You you got reverse beating, so you could learn about block strings or whatever you want. And her mix-ups are okay, but I think you hit I think you hit your peak very early, right? Um. Yeah. Uh. When you when you understand the game. A little bit more. HB Sion is one of those characters that you could really expose people with. Um, like, like, like in the, like in the, 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 the later. I guess I, sh I guess I could say. Um, but I, I believe like any one of those beginner characters is, is like really strong in the later game. Uh, there's, there's one, there's one really, really, like, um. Really, really easy character I'm missing, but I cannot think of it right now. Uh, uh, it's not Nero, but Nero's easy too. Um, whatever. Uh, just go to the next question while I'm thinking about it. I, I'm, I'm thinking of it. All right, our next question is: Can portable system fighting games possibly good be good, or are they just dumb? That was subjective. Uh, Move on. Yeah. Although, it's not ideal, because, you know, they don't really make sticks or that, like, pads and stuff for portable fighting games, and people don't generally play on them. Uh, would you prefer playing in arcades at home or online? What? Yeah, play play oh. at arcades at home or online. Why is this a question? I, I don't arcades know. probably. Uh, I would. Yeah, I I would say arcades, but the only reason the only reason why I'm not really the only reason why I'm really saying home with like strong players is that because like down here that's all I had. I didn't really play. In an arcade until maybe like like Tekken Five, like like the DR days, like uh, Tekken DR. We we had an arc down here that had uh, Tekken Five DR, and we would play there like every 
and we would meet new people while we're in. And you know, it's 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 all good and stuff. I I loved it, but that was like six, seven years ago, and now it's just getting a group of folks that you know in a house and playing at home offline which is pretty much one thing i have like the most experience with and it is definitely a uh um a, a good way to you know strengthen not only you know your game around your peers but also your community as well well that was a good way to answer the question i, I don't have anything to add obviously not online for sure okay uh yeah, yeah online is is it's I, I won't I won't say it's all it's all bad, but it's really up there dependent. Yeah. Because you can play and you can play in shit and <laughs> something out of it or like won't won't, you know, age as hard as other people do. Some people have real high parts for online and it's mainly because they don't have anybody else to play. Mostly people who don't have a community. Or people who have a community, but it's like so spread out that they would need to, uh, to, 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 to play online to fill in the fill in the blank whenever they want to play. So, you know, I, I think it's I think it's I think online is something that's player dependent. I don't necessarily think that's bad. It's just it's just something that players are more tolerable to. I agree also with Simon Shinobi. Because most people doesn't have like a community that they could just fall back on. Most of the time, they just fall back off online, most likely. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. Thoughts on frequent patch updates. If you agree, how long should a competitive scene let a version rock before it should be patched? Um... I think in the case, Guilty Gear is a pretty good example, I, I guess. it's It's been a really long time since AC and Plus R, and when they announced the patch to Plus R, uh, Arc System Works apparently trying to make the game better, and I think I think it was a good, a good way to bring up more flavor and bring more people to play the game, and it did happen, so I think it's interesting how long it should last exactly i don't know i don't like patches to be too frequent because I, I don't like when i don't get enough time to like adapt to how to play the game like i don't even know how to play my character yet and then my character gets changed it's pretty annoying yeah and um yeah. patch updates have been getting frequent because of the whole like you know ps3 dlc stuff like, you know sf4 got one version like every year or something you know super to ae was like a dlc one and then you know you have 2012 whereas like back in the day like you know games came out on discs and you had no like dlc patch stuff like when you release a game it's done and you can play it or you can like choose to not play it so in that sense i think like Developers probably spent more effort on making a game good, and but also like the players themselves put more effort into you know finding out everything about the game, because like too easily nowadays, especially in like Street Fighter community, people dismiss like the the really strong characters right now as being like retardedly broken and that they should be patched or whatever. But it may be the case that they just didn't like spend enough time with it to figure out how to beat them, and they don't have enough time because you know before you know it, like Capcom hears the the whining and then they release another patch. Fuck that shit. Anything to add, guys? Um, on on frequent patches, well. I know that people, uh, well, I would, the, like, the main thing about patch updates now is that it seems to be, um, it, they, they seem to be coming out by player demand, um, you know, players would say that so-and-so characters 
you know, bad or so and so. It was like really, really retarded. And um, of course, like I, I do have faith, you know, the people who people who make these games, they actually back and look at these videos and be like, hey, this is kind of this is kind of messed up. We need to we need to fix this or something. But um, how frequent they are, it, it's 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 more or less it's more or less continuously changing how the, how the game is played, and it's more frustrating for for um, I want to say character loyalists, people who who just play that character no matter what, no matter whether it be like you know white food love I guess or uh, or just you know, having, you know, just seeing that character's style and it's like, yo, this is my character. Um, having to go through so many changes in a short amount of time, it's it's, it's kind of like, I don't, I, I really don't see where they're going with this character. Or sometimes it may just, like, be strengthening to the character. It may be like, oh, okay, well, this can help, uh, this can help insinuate what I was doing here and they made it better. So with how frequent going it's mostly a bad thing but you know i i I can't i was in an i came from an era where we didn't have update we only had like updates whenever they felt like it you know there there it wasn't the age of the dlc what we have now so i i guess i guess it was more along the lines of just deal with it and most people did and hey most uh some of those players who dealt with it are winning they were winning things man. so i i would think the only reason why marvel isn't getting it up right now even though people are just going crazy about morgan is that they they said that the team split up uh the team is just doing other things but if they ever got back together the first thing that first thing everybody's going to be saying is you need to do something about this bitch with the wings and shit. So, uh, all in all, I think it's, I, I just, I just think it's not a, it's not a good, it's not a good look for having to, to switch out how your game works once every, once every couple weeks. I know it's to, you know, I know it's for demand and I know it's to keep the game like, you know, up to date and recent, but, uh, but in the long run, it, it, it really, well, I don't want to say fuse, but and I'm trying to think of another word than confuse, but I think that's the only word I can think of right now for it. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not too sure on like the Marvel deal. I, I know people say that this character is too good and they've been doing that recent uh, character banning shit on like FGTV or whatever. Have you heard about that? I don't think that's going to be a thing, so don't worry about it. Yeah. I think they were just doing it for fun. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I don't think the the game's that bad, balance-wise. It should be fine, and that game hasn't been out for that long. It, the, 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 so many new characters keep emerging in that game, I think they'll still find more stuff. Alright. This next question is about execution. That's crazy. What do you think about uh, the button hold from KOF 13? And do you want to spread it to other fighters? In case you don't know, the question will tell us. Example, quarter circle forward punch, light DP, and then hold the punch. So it will happen on the first frame possible for a button hold buffer limit. Ooh, I do not know anything about this because I never touched KOF before. So Isn't that like anybody? Blaze Blue? Where like you hold down the button and then it counts as that input for like five inputs. So is this like a, a better negative edge? I don't I don't really know what he's talking about. Yeah, I think it's like increasing. So you hold down a button for five frames, for example, like in Blaze Blue, and then it counts as that input like five A once every frame for five frames. So it is kind of like a negative edge. I see. Well, the, the I don't question, like it. Yeah, the question's like, would you spread it to other games? Not really, because it doesn't seem that good. Yeah, I would not, because timing is a skill, 
that you need to acquire if you want to play like competitive games or like you know competitive fighting games anyway and stuff that like holds your hand like this I think has no place most definitely agree Oh, this question is kind of a throwback to what we were talking before. Should should devs give in to player demands regarding balance? No. I think if they're going to do anything regarding balance, they should, you know, assemble assemble like a uh, a group of maybe universally acknowledged high-level players like, you know, yeah, like Daigo, Infiltration, Shen, like Fudo, Mago together in the room and have them like really seriously talk about it and stuff like that. But a lot of the stuff with like balance changes I think comes from you know just the majority whining about like Yoon or something. That kind of stuff is no good in my opinion. But if you really want to balance it then you'll need to do it like professionally. So they they did this for Street Fighter Four, right? I think the the whole community balance thing is that for the upcoming version or was that for 2012? I don't actually know what they do with balance. I think it's for the upcoming one. Hmm. Because I, I remember on like the Capcom site or whatever they had like CapcomUnity dot com or whatever the hell it is. They had like forums or whatever and people would submit all these subjections and stuff. Oh yeah, thank you. Co Combo Fiend is taking input from people apparently. Mm. Oh, I remember he was taking input from people also at during EVO. Oh. Oh, I remember like there was some Capcom Unity post about that or something. Mm-hmm. Well, Combo Fiend's a smart person so I'm sure he'll be able to like filter out what's like really what's worth ignoring in terms of like posts and what seriously like worth considering I see so I guess your answer is uh, if if well-known people are working on it it's worth doing but if it's just for like random people and everyone's request it's terrible yeah, and obviously the game will need some time to sit and actually mature. You don't want to have to balance something too early when it's not necessary. Yeah, definitely goes back to our other question as well. Never balance. Look at ST. <laughs> so, Sean, how long should they give uh, until they should uh, do the balance change? I don't know. Depends on the game. It depends. That's my answer. Okay. Alright. I need help. My sisters always play fighting games with me. But because they play games all the time, I can never net play enough. How do I tell them that I want to play other people sometimes? They also scare me when they get mad when I mess up a combo or do something dumb. <laughs> I'm I don't sorry, think this I'm is sorry. a real question. I think this person's lying about having sisters that play fighting games. If, That's if, what I'm if so, I'm nigga, so... your life is anime and you need help. <laughs> yeah, like the Aradagi twins playing fighting games with you. Real... Does anybody here know if they if they have a friend or something with a, that his sister or whatever is playing fighting games? I just want to know that. I've never seen a girl play fighting games in my entire life. I see some. That was in SoCal. SoCal. They exist. You just gotta find them. Do I want to yeah, find like... them? Oh. <sighs> no, no one asked good questions, Sean. Like, this question here is, are black people racially superior at playing Arcana Heart 3? Yes. Yeah, I, th I think it has been proven. There have been case studies. Oh, I wrote my mean, thesis on it. You mean the world versus uh, black people? Where pain, yeah. where pain killed everyone? It can't be done. SK will text to everyone for us and we will win. <coughs> I'm dying inside right now. <coughs> Help! 
I can't play fighting games because I can't WAP hard enough. What do? What the fuck is WAP? <laughs> WAP? What? W-O-P. Well, oh. you want... I'm oh. gonna say... Oh, they mean the day. I guess, I don't... I even I haven't even seen it spelled out, but... Yeah, what... But I don't... What is it, Tari? I don't know what the fuck this guy is asking me. What? Let's just skip it. Ugh, there's, there's no there's no good questions. They're just all bad. Uh... Oop. I was gonna say, if you want inspiration, just go look at Brawly Legs. That man is an inspiration himself. Shut up, Tari. Uh, do we have any legit questions? Holy fuck. It looks like we don't. Like, one of these quest. Oh, finally, two new questions. What are you special- What are you special silly slash combo memorization tricks? I see. Do you- Do we, any of you use combos with your eyes closed or something like that to build that muscle memory? Um, no. Go ahead. No, you go first. I no, I don't. But um, I know this may sound obvious, but it should be it should be grinded. That, that that's pretty much it's pretty much how I do mines. Uh, uh, yeah, I grind them. Sometimes, sometimes I, sometimes um, for fun, I just look at my. I look at my pad and I do the combo. And what you notice sometimes when I'm looking at my shit is like, holy fuck, this is how I do this combo? You never look at your hands when you're doing combos, you're looking at the screen. But I look at my hands and it's like, oh shit. This looks, this looks pretty retarded. I can't Might believe I did a, this. I see the Simpsons episode. Whoa, I have hands. <laughs> You're stupid. Yeah, pretty much. It's like, oh, damn, <laughs> my, my hands can do this? Word. It's like, how is this possible? How the fuck my hands is able to move like this? Well, if, <laughs> one thing I do do for combos, it's, it's not really a trick, though, but you can break down the combo, if possible, to make it easier so you can practice one segment of the combo. I mean, do the entire thing. I do that sometimes, but yeah, you kind of have to just do that shit until you can do it. You know, like the the fucking rock loop that Power Seal has. Fuck that shit. That combo's hella hard. Oh, uh, I love that combo. I actually matter did fact, that with Persona before. Matter of fact, I'm about to do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did that with all the kanji combo when I was playing Persona 4, seriously. I broke it down, like, each segment, and then just put it all together, and it actually just worked. I was really surprised about it. Hmm, that's you cool. Could, you could also try playing Skullgirls. The combos are hella fucking long, and you'll get good at memorizing shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um... Oh yeah, I will say to my earlier point about looking at my hands. I looked at my hands during the rock combo, and I it, 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 this was just random. I looked at my hands while I was doing the rock combo one time, and I was drunk, and I was like, "Bricks." <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. That's all I said. <laughs> I I did like five reps on Nero from a throw, and. I just saw my hands doing it all the time, and I was like, the fuck? Bricks, man. Oh, what do I do about all the bad people who always talk about playing fighting games I play, but don't want to put in the time nor effort? Can't uh, do anything about yeah, it. Yeah, just Come ignore it. some bitch niggas. Put it that way. Yep. Deal with it. When are we ending this, by the way? Uh, we should do like 8.30 or something. Or whenever we run out okay. of questions that are relevant or interesting. 
All right. Uh, is it ever worth worth it to play high execution characters? I usually try, but end up dropping the soap with the characters I like, like Evil Ryu and Eddie. It seems like no amount of practice sets in the muscle memory. I don't think you practice enough. I don't think you practice um, enough either. Same here. If you, you to, if you keep on dropping, you haven't practiced enough. You have to just kind of like isolate your problem and you know experiment with it. It's like, oh, I'm dropping this link. Why am I dropping it? Looks like I'm hitting it too late because you know I'm hitting them and it's not comboing. So try hitting it earlier, that kind of thing. It goes back to the earlier question. It's just like grinding until you get it. Use when I practice guard. combos, I also sometimes when I practice combos, I turn off the sound. Because then you like you'll probably always be looking at the screen anyway, so you know I'm not gonna like stop looking at the screen. But I'll turn off sound because like in an environment where you can't really hear the game very well, you'll be less reliant on your audio cues and more reliant on your muscle memory and like visual confirmation and stuff. Oh, I see. Yeah, there's no secret. You just practice until you can do it consistently even do you have to do this with everything if you're trying to hit confirm and you're you, you just do the combos in training mode you have to practice it in real games as well my fingers lock up when i play fighting games what should i do it's like i hit a wall whenever i try to learn a combo and it won't stop if you, do you have advice for hitting hitting walls I'll try doing it slower so that I don't know you. You shouldn't be at a point where your mind just like blanks out. You should probably I don't know. You can try doing the combo input slower so that you know you have in your your muscle memory a little bit more. And then when you get to that point in the combo, it might be easier to like remember that part. Try not get nervous because. You may drop your combos because you're nervous about whether you land the combo or not. I don't. I don't think it's a physical problem. Just they're, they're not used to it yet, and they're they're thinking too hard about. They're they're like probably concentrating too hard on like one thing and not really thinking about what's going on. Wow, uh, I was the best in the U.S. at one point in time, but now my character got nerfed in the new version. Should I switch characters to top tier again, or just quit fighting games forever? Wait, wait, oh wait, oh, what was the question again? The question was, he said he was the best in the U.S. at one point in time. And their character got nerfed in the new version of whatever, and he's asking if he should switch to top tier or just quit fighting games. Just so quit fighting games, there's no hope. Yeah. No. Man, sounds like a fucking liar. No future. No future. None. Well, if you want a serious answer, then did, did the character the make you the best? Or do you think it was you that made you the best? If you think it was you, then I'll keep playing that character. Or if you want to switch to top tier again, go ahead. If you want to keep winning. See, if you're the best and you switch to top tier, you'd still win. Sounds, sounds like Tokido. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty fraudulent thing to say. Would you? Sounds like a joke question. So yeah, yeah. Just move on. What would you? What would your ideal training mode additions for a fighting game be? If possible, name one game with the best training mode at the moment. Danny, Guilty Gear. Danny, Danny says nude mode. <laughs> Guilty <laughs> Gear because it has recording and playback at really convenient locations. You know, just like hit a button and then you start recording and then hit the other button and you just play it back whenever you want. Doesn't that and Persona have it? Yeah, cause same company. Okay. 
Yo, I, I know that Tekken has a really fucking good training mode. Especially because the, their recording mode or whatever, it has multiple... It has multiple things you can record, and you can set percentages on how often they happen. That's so good. Uh, yeah. That's really good. Yeah, Skullgirls has a nice training mode, too. You got, like, uh... It's pretty funny, too, because Skullgirls went from, like, the most ass training mode ever to being pretty legit. Has, like, save states and all... Basically all the options you need, but before you couldn't even, like, set them the fucking block. It was so bad. Oh yeah, what Tari just said right now. You can reset you can reset the stage on the middle, left or right for Persona. Marvel has That's that pretty too. Important. Oh Marvel does also? Many games yeah, have Marvel it. does that. Yeah. Um what what I do wanna see in the near future when it comes to when it comes to training modes is to is to have like a to just have a hitbox Or hitbox viewer? Yeah, 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 like box viewer. But, yeah, um, really good. But another interesting thing about it, uh, another interesting thing I would like for it to have is to have it, is to have modes in it that will show between only showing uh, uh, hitboxes or clash boxes or clash frames, I guess you could say, or things like that. Yeah. Um, so just like toggling between different kinds of like hitboxes that yeah. move has. Yeah. It's fair. Probably really good. Yeah, like hitboxes and herbs. Yeah. I know Skullgirls has say, that. Wait, what? Should training mode should training mode will have uh frame data in it? So it'll be easier for everyone. Yeah, did our live does um, that. I think I th I, that would be interesting. I, I think that <laughs> I actually that would help me a lot, to be honest. Um, it could also help with um, uh, something something they take to, but and it's something that I wish more. Uh, something I wish more trading modes did too, was uh would have um, would have a recover set to a button. Uh, like. Like say in the like say in the very first in the very first frame you can hit a button it'll just press a certain button but have like a record function for that so say you're trying to like make an airtight block string but in a certain frame but um but after you know certain amount of frames that they're actually free to do something they'll do what you told them to input I mean they'll they'll do what you input it you know um. Like say for example you're trying to do a block string and you want the opponent to DP like as soon as like the first first possible frame they're able to. You know? You just tell it to record DP. Just do a DP motion with them. And then have it set to recover record. I guess that's like a good name for it. Recover record. Yeah. And um Yeah, and it's like it's it's like in the verse very first possible frame they're able to do something they'll do that they'll do it. McKee is right you can't do that in school girls they also have stuff like that in like KOF 13 it's kind of nice but yeah just having as many of those options as possible makes it really helpful and it's kind of hard to run into a game with like really bad training mode these days they usually have uh yeah yeah this is true um <laughs> Okay, this question is a little weird. How do you see the one frame link? Do you have to feel it for the as as the recovery of the mood ends and press it and press it? Example: Subaki two two C super. I put on my one frame, you know, glasses, and oh, that's what everyone does. Don't you do that? I I, I do do that. One frame viewer glasses. Well, I use my one frame macro button. Sorry. Oh. Uh. Those are expensive. Oh, I, I can't buy those yet. How do you get that? <laughs> I guess in I guess in games like Street Fighter where you have plinking, I guess it's a gets it's a lot easier. But get up for games that I play that have absolutely no such thing as plinking. Um, 
It's just first feeling of, it, in my opinion. First of all, yeah, yeah, that's that that that's like that's like step two. But like, first of all, be sure you're not like on your fucking head, and be sure that it actually is feasible. Because people, just you know, um, they see T Death do shit, and it's like, yo, I'm trying to do this in anymore, and this shit doesn't work. Niggas retarded. Like, like, man, just do some crazy shit. You can't do that shit. I'm sorry. You can't do that. <laughs> it's just so, impossible. Like, be sure, so, like, be sure what you're trying to do is, like, has been done in a match that was, like, for real. <laughs> and not, like, some, not, like, some tool assist match. Not, like, I know Des doesn't do tool assist, but... Some of the shit he does looks mad to assist. He plays music. He's a drummer. I'm sure that helped. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, drum. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure that helps though. But So the real once answer is know that it's possible. Just this like this is really a a grind sort of thing. I think the last time I did such such links was like fart in actress again. So I, I knew those were possible, but it was definitely it was definitely a thing. Um, and also learn and also learn the properties of moves. If you can like do simple addition on understanding your frame data, um, be sure that it's be sure that it is possible to do like just do a little research between the two moves you're trying to put together for a combo. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much. It. I was just I was just gonna say if you're able to do that kind of shit in a tournament environment, then I'm just gonna say okay, you know how to do it. I guess one thing to add is it should kind of like be beneficial too, and not just be like flashy shit. Cause you shouldn't go for one frame shit if it doesn't really give like you do like some one frame combo but it doesn't end the knockdown but it looks cooler. Fuck that shit. You should you should go for knockdown. Speak. Unless you're just really good at it. Yeah, but then like I'm saying like if the combo was worse and people just doing it just so they could be fancy. Oh yeah, that's how you lose. Yeah, that's that, so many people that does that. You don't want to lose. Speaking of all this hitbox information, wouldn't games be better if the hitboxes were much more intuitive to the player? Aren't moves where it's confusing why slash how slash where the hit is a bad thing? It's it's pretty deceiving at times, but it doesn't like make the game shit unless it's like all the normals, and I've never seen that before. Yes. It, it would be better if the hitboxes were intuitive, I think. It shouldn't be confusing what kind of moves are sticking out. Uh, I think I pretty much agree with it. Yeah, I guess if you're thinking about like, invincible moves and you have to like, consider that. Like, you know, if Uppercut is invincible, then you have to understand that. Even though his body is there, you can't actually hit it. I think that's as far as it goes. Yeah, they're they're also they're usually like pretty good about that, like moves yeah. that go over lows and stuff. They're obviously airborne and stuff like that. Hmm. Ah, I see. All right, I think we're out of questions that don't suck. So yeah, I think we're done, Sean. Oh yeah. Try refreshing once more. No, it, it auto updates. I guess I'll do one more oh. call. All right. I mean, like these questions are hella bad. I don't even. I don't even want to say this, but I will. It's Bridget's butt better than Platinum's. I don't know either of these God characters. Damn it. My face is exactly what view is displaying on the stream right now. <laughs> Alright, well, I, I'm pretty sure we don't have any more questions. 
but it seems like all the questions today that we got were like, this combo's hard, I can't do it, and the answer is like, you gotta practice. Practice more, figure out what the problem is. Yeah. And keep doing the combo over and over again. I'm sad. No, no, no good questions, Sean. Well, the, the, the block stream one was pretty legit. Shout out to that guy. That was the yeah. very first one. It was. Well, also, I'm gonna need the source to share that. Wait, what? Someone liked it earlier. I'm gonna need the source picture of that view one because I haven't gotten that one yet. Oh yeah. You guys. Wait, so Silence Shinobi. Did you, you win Evo this year? Did I what? Did you went to Evo this year, right? Uh no I did not. Did not go to Evo this year. I wanted to, but life. I am going to next year though. Alright, that sounds good. Yo, Sean, this question's hella good. How did you manage to go an hour without actually giving out any tips on how to practice? It's really easy. Is that a question? It, it, it doesn't even have a question mark. <laughs> Maybe people should ask the right questions. <laughs> oh, it was Tari. Where do you get melty blood? That's where you get melty blood from. That pace bin. Oh well. Alright, that, that was good. You guys have anything to say? Or sign off messages or whatever the fuck? Requesting some shinobi pop off rants, please. I don't... I have a, I have a show for that. Like... <laughs> I don't wanna... Oh, snap. You know what? While I'm at it, if I have a few minutes, um, I I run a run a podcast on uh, I run a podcast called Don John Network Second Phase, and uh, with uh, Brandino Shas Brandino, um, we did two shows in September. Uh, one was for Chaos Code, and one was for um, uh. I I keep saying endless night, but it's fearless night. Um, fearless night, Dojin, uh, the the Dojin fighting game that um, Chase Magic Zynac, uh is making. Now uh, it's been to PAX East and uh, a few other places, and you may have seen it if you've ever watched uh, Buckeye Air Dasher, the stream that um, the Ohio. Yeah, it's in Ohio anime major somewhat and uh he always brings it there i did two shows um on those so like i'm just gonna come here if you want to see them that's the uh that's the fearless night one and then i also did one with uh tenrio who is the um the uh community community manager for FK Digital, the people who made Chaos Code, I did a show with him, and I gave away some Chaos Code um, stuff. I gave away some um, uh, codes <laughs> for Chaos Code. So um, I'll be doing another giveaway in the near future for Chaos Code codes, PSN codes. So um, you can uh, like and favorite or what whatever it is you do to um to like my twitch channel and i'll be sure to be giving updates on our next show uh i i might not have one this month if i do it'll be something on blaze blue but not guaranteed if it's going to be on blaze blue or not if i do have a show in october at all you can follow me on twitter it's on the stream um if you want to know any more information about and that's pretty much my uh, about my show yo sean did you nice. see that game by the way the the fucking weird looking gg kind of style game what was it called again a fearless knight yeah have you seen that sean no 
got a chick with a scythe. It looks sick. Oh, yeah, also, yeah, on that, um, on that show I did with him, I have some gameplay footage of the, uh, of the most recent build of the game, so definitely check that out if you want to know, if you want to know something about, uh, Fearless Knight. I'll be doing a show with him sometime next year about it. So, yeah. Alright, man, that sounds good, Silent Sonobi. Last question, yeah. Sean. It says, Sean, should I fix Sagat? Always fix Sagat. Just, just pick him. Just pick a top tier. Yo. I should, I should, I should tell this little spray, should I? Oh no. Oh yes. Wait, one more. About the time. The story is when I did Shred and his group during AX, and I went by myself. I didn't tell anybody about it, but after 15 minutes of walking around, let's just say I saw these two girls wearing Steingate, <laughs> Steingate cosplay. I went up to them and talked to them, and let's just say after t 5 to 10 minutes of talking to them, we had, you know, a little special thing in the back. And let's just say, I'll give you guys that imagination of what happened next. That's you awkward. traded waifu cards. Uh, That's what you did. <laughs> you all just got in a quarter and <laughs> traded waifu cards mm -hmm. of, a trading, of a trading card game I've never even heard of. Yeah, and now waifu cards actually have some numbers on it. I actually kind of like this question, even though I don't know the answer. Well, I sort of know the answer to it. It's like, I want to play Blaze Blue, but every character just doesn't feel good. I just can't find that one character I want. What should I do? I think you should play a different game. If you can't find a single character you, should... you like. I think you should play VP. Well, don't, don't play that <laughs> game. <laughs> no, no one's gonna you know play what? that game, ever. God, I missed that game. <laughs> What's up, Kenji? I'm going to play Street Fighter. Street Fighter has... What's a game with cool characters? You could play Guilty Gear. It has, it has Soul. That guy has a sword. You want to play cool characters? Play Marvel. No. Marvel, Marvel doesn't have just, any cool characters. You just, you just know. You got, you got Nova. <laughs> that guy's cool, even though like his gameplay is pretty standard. Yo, you got, you got Modok. That dude is cool. <laughs> Modok actually who, is who cool. Blazes, I'm awesome. All right, yo. Um, I think it's time to shut this shit down because we're not getting questions. It's terrible. Rip. I mean, right. viewers, I got goddamn. What? Oh, shit. Oh, I forgot you're on Brett's channel. Yeah, it's time. It's time to pack it up. Yeah, Let's, wrap it up. Yeah, pa pack it up, guys. Go home. All right, oh. everybody. It's time to shut this shit down. I'm sorry, but we are done. Follow me on Twitter. And uh, follow the show. Follow your Please. boy, Silent Shinobi, on Twitter. Your boy, Tenkai, on Twitter. And Clark on Twitter. And myself. On Twitter. <sighs> oh, well. Good games. How do, how do I turn mm. this off?